thank you. Bye. Hey guys, it's Luke here and welcome back to a, another video. You join me today in Geneva. I've literally flown out here for one day to film one video and that is a video that you're watching. But I just paid 120 Swiss francs for a taxi from the airport. Welcome to Switzerland, I guess. Now, anyway, I'm here today to check out a car collection. Now, this is technically going to be a garage goals, even though this is actually an auction. This is a Bonhams auction viewing day. However, every single car in this auction is owned by one guy, or was owned until they got seized. More of that in a sec. Um, so, yeah, I thought I'd fly out here and basically check them all out because there are some serious, serious cars here. I think about 20, 30-ish, 30? And most of them are hypercars, so that puts it into perspective. But anyway, let's have a wander around this place. Lovely place, actually. It's a golf club and country club, so it's very posh as it is. Um, and check out some really cool cars and tell you especially some pretty interesting stories about this collection. Anyway, let's get stuck in. completely honest with you right now I'm in one of those moments where I just don't know what direction to go in first like I've seen some cool cars in my time but this this is this this is this is mad <laughs> absolutely mad so I think it's fair to say that this is one of the most bizarre places I've ever been to um, yeah there's like no one here <laughs> um, and the people who are here you can just tell they are they've got a big wallet like big like i there's me with a camera with a backpack on like <clears throat> hi and they're like oh yeah that's, that's not that bad at six million pound i'm like okay um but yeah the car's here mad owned by or was owned by one guy um so they were all based here in switzerland um however back in 2017 um uh, they all got seized um, there was some sort of illegal thing which happened. I don't really know what happened. Um, and I don't really want to share it on here either. Um, and all the cars got seized. Now, I always knew that when the cars got seized, they were going to come up for auction one day. Um, and funnily enough, <laughs> here we are. <laughs> um, so I was always kind of in the back of my mind that these cars were about. Now, they've stayed in Geneva. Um, they've just been in storage somewhere, I guess. Um, and it's absolutely nuts. So just to put this into perspective, like, imagine being that baller that your car collection is a whole entire auction. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's pretty nuts. Like, I've got a 177 next to me, I've got a 918, I've got an SA Aperso, I've got a TDF, I've got a P1 over there, one, one to one, Veneno Roadster, Reventon Roadster, the list goes on. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's mad. It's absolutely mad. So yeah, like I mentioned, the cars all got seized back in 2017 and the auction which I'm at today, Bonhams, um, are selling them all for no reserve. So in the supercar kind of market game, that is gonna be very, very interesting, especially for cars like the P1 and the LaFerrari to see what kind of prices they go to. Because normally they have reserves. So say um, if the owner wants two and a half million, for example, um, then it won't sell unless it gets above that. But this, there's literally, you know, like someone could get this for a tenner. That's, no, that, that won't happen. Although, <laughs> no, seriously. Um, so it's it's all or nothing really, especially for the Veneno Rose. I think that's the first time which one of those has come out um, onto an auction block, even for sale publicly. Yeah, publicly. Um, so it's super interesting. Can you tell I'm just completely all over the place? Um, but yeah, I'm just gonna kind of take all this in again and uh, we can go into some detail about some of these cars because it's, an, it's a once in a lifetime opportunity to see cars like this, especially that Veneno. Um, so in fact, let's go over there first. So here we are then, entering the tent of Lamborghini royalty. <laughs> I'm just gonna casually walk past the Reventon Roadster and show you the Veneno Roadster. Now, the Veneno is very loosely based off of the Aventador. When you strip it all back right down to the chassis, it shares the same as the Aventador. Um, does it look like an Aventador? No. Is it an Aventador? Absolutely not. For those of you who don't really know, this is one of Lamborghini's most special, valuable and insane cars that they've ever made. Um, so there are five, I believe, coupes um, and nine roasters, and this is of course one of the roasters in one of the most out there specs, I think, 
you can safely say. Um, so I don't think the camera's really going to pick this up very well, but it's it's a two-tone. So we've got white on the kind of um, the wheel arches and around towards the front, and like a central section in cream. Yes, cream. I think this is the only cream hypercar I've ever seen. Oh no, I take that back. I've seen a Veyron in cream. There's a Veyron over there. I'll get to that shortly. This is mad. Um, so yeah, it's white and cream, which is it's unusual, I and mean, in the chrome wheels as well. But the Veneno, powered by a six and a half litre naturally aspirated V12. Of course it does. It's got a Lamborghini badge on it. Um, and like I said, very, very few were made. Um, this is my first Roadster. So I've seen one coupe, which is Lamborghini's um, own car that, they've, uh, that I saw back in Italy. Um, and then this is the only Roadster I have seen. Absolutely monumental thing. Let me look inside. Take a look at this. It's actually quite a, a stylish interior. I'm liking the kind of beige, creamy kind of um, interior leather. One of my favourite things, though, is those three little buttons you get there. I'm, I'm not sure what they do. Are they, is it there are missile launchers in the front or something? I'll tell you what, though. It does look like it should. I mean, look at this thing. Absolutely nuts. What do you think of it, though? Do you think... Is it a bit of you? Is it not? I don't know. It's, it's certainly not everyone's cup of tea, especially in this spec, I know, but... You can't deny it's an absolute work of art. I love this shark tail, shark fin that goes down towards the back. The huge fixed rear wing, which, by the way, you can alter. So if you want to take it out on track or whatever, do a high speed run, you can put your little Lamborghini tool in there and, and change the, the tilt of the wing. Awesome thing, absolutely awesome. I mean, this has got to be just one of the closest things to a spaceship. <laughs> I mean, look at this. Look at this thing. I can't get over this. This is actually one of... It's, it's quite interesting for me to see this car because this is one of, well, quite a few cars here today that I never thought I'd see. I never, ever thought I'd see this car. And here we are. Absolutely mad. Was it worth taking a day trip to Geneva for? Absolutely. Yes. Although that taxi was ridiculous. Um, but yeah, Veneno Roadster. We'll come back to that, I'm sure, a little bit later. But for now, I think let's move over to the Reventon Rosa. Now, this is the predecessor, technically, to that, um, which is pretty incredible, especially to have in the same collection. Now, I think 40 of these were made overall, or maybe 35, because I think 15 coupes and 20 roadsters all the other way around. Actually, I can probably tell from in there. What does that say? 15, there we go. So yeah, very, very rare equally. And it all came in this matte grey colour. It's one of actually quite a few cars nowadays which are in a fixed spec, so you can't actually spec it at all. Again, looking like a fudge jet. And this was actually, uh, well, one of the main design cues with this was, I believe, an F-16 bomber or something. Absolutely mad. And actually one of my favourite bits is those carbon blades you get on the wheels. Absolutely stunning, of course. Again, rear mid-mounted 6.5 litre V12, of course, naturally aspirated. Um, and yeah, absolutely incredible. Of course, this is the roadster, so we can have a little peek because the roof is off. Now this, uh, I forgot to mention actually, is very loosely based off of the Mercia Largo, as you can probably tell from the interior. However, it, oh, just every bit of it just looks so mean, so special. So, I know it's monotone, isn't it? Which just makes it so stealth. Of course, you've got the doors, which just go straight up. Um, but yeah, Reventon Roadster and Veneno Roadster. Which one for you, though? That's a topic. Let's have a little wander around some of the other cars then. We've got a Giallo Enzo, literally the first thing you see. That's where I got out of the taxi. And I saw that and I was like, yes, I'm in the right place. Cool. Um, but yeah, that's not all. We have, oh, polarise, these three. Now starting things off then with actually the rarest car at this auction. And that's saying something. <laughs> so this is the Koenigsegg one to one. Now only seven of these things exist in the world. Most known for the fact that it has the one to one power to weight ratio. So it weighs 1360 kilos and has a total power output of 1360 horsepower. Really cool spec actually. We've got the Gera wheels. Now normally the one-to-one -one has updated wheels, uh, but that's quite refreshing to see, especially in silver. We've got of course a fully blue exposed carbon body with the black carbon central stripe with the blue dream lines, cream interior, and a whole host of mental aero. Look at that scoop. 
it's a work of art, the active wing, which is actually a double wing mounted from the roof, uh, which is really cool. We've got louvers on the front, of course, massive front splitter. The thing looks absolutely nuts. I think this is the fifth one that I've seen out of the seven, which, I'm not gonna lie, isn't bad going. Uh, but look at this. How is that for a view? Well, this is the first time that a one-to-one -one has come up for auction, so I am very intrigued as to what's going to happen. In fact, the auction would have already happened by the time that this video is live. Um, but yeah, I'll be tuning in, that is for sure. Now over here we have three hype cars. Actually, I almost forgot that the P1 was over there. We've got a P1 over there, Volcano Yellow, very nice spec. A yellow Laf and a Veyron 16.4. Out of all the mental Bugattis that are around lately, it's actually really refreshing to see a standard uh, Veyron 16.4. I think it's finished in, was it French Racing Blue, I think? Normally the Veyron and the Chiron, actually, um, are finished in like a jewel tone. So we've got one colour at the front and another colour at the back. And this is all the same colour with cream interior. Sat in handling mode, so we can actually <coughs> see the muffler of the exhaust. And obviously that's where the, the wing sits as it's down. Now, but one thing that not many people know about the Veyron is it's actually got secret exhaust. So we have the main tip in the middle. Also, can you see that? Another one there. And another one on the other side as well, buried into the diffuser. Awesome looking thing. Definitely going down in one of the all-time greats. I think one of the cars that actually got me heavily into cars myself. Um, it's kind of a poster car for my era. Anyway, and then we have a LaFerrari. Come on, tell me, what is there not to like about the LaFerrari? My personal favourite of the Holy Trinity, finished in giallo. Uh, I think his, probably his, one of his favourite colours was actually yellow, because quite a few of them are finished in this kind of spec with the doors up as well. So we can have a little peek inside, full Alcantara interior. Look at that. What a place to be. Let's have a little peek into that engine bay. One of my favourite things about Ferraris is just how they display the engines. It's a work of art, an absolute work of art. That is what you call a naturally aspirated V12 with over 900 brake horsepower. What a thing. Actually, one of the interesting things about this is there isn't any carbon fibre on it. It's kind of gloss black trim, which is quite refreshing. I tell you what, this place is absolutely amazing. It really is, it's such a cool little place, but you, you know, I, I didn't come for the, for the architecture, I came for the cars, and there's plenty of them. I mean, oh my word. TDF, one of 799 worldwide. 177, one of 77 worldwide. SA Aperta, one of 100-ish worldwide and the 918 Spider, one of 918 worldwide. Oh. Let's have a quick whiz round then. Naturally, I'm gonna start with the TDF because you all know that it's my favorite. Triple layer yellow, silver wheels, carbon center caps. I love that color combination, or spec combination, shall we say. No stripe at all, very clean. Red 177, now only 77 of these in the world. I've only seen about five. I've never seen one in red and I've never seen one with those wheels on before. I think it's only covered like 500 miles or kilometers since new. To be honest, most of these cars pretty much are unused, which is a bit of a crime, I'll admit, but that is very cool, very, very cool. SA Aperta, not one of 100, one of around 80. Now it's basically a convertible version of the 599 GTO, so it still remains uh, the same V12 up front. Very similar styling uh, internally and externally, but just has the option of a removable roof. And then, tucked away in the corner, a 918 Spider. Finished in yellow. Now, I've seen a yellow one before, but it wasn't paint. This is. Oh, it looks absolutely stunning, although it does look a bit funky with the acid green calipers. Um, but yeah, this is not a Vysat car, so it doesn't have the, ex the extra uh, carbon fibre um, little bits here and there in the different wheels, but still. I do love a 918. I've seen actually nearly 80 of these things now. Um, and this one is actually Now, just as I thought I'd seen it all, I find all of this. I mean, this is one hefty collection, you know, <laughs> with some seriously seriously special cars. The Porsche lover in me right now is geeking out, like big time geeking out. Look at this, 911 GT, look at those wide arches. Utterly bonkers looking thing based off of the 993, uh, as is that. 
but yeah, just look at this. Look at this. Got the AT Speedster, the original Speedster, uh, a Targa there, a Turbo S Edition 918 Spider, so it's basically a Turbo S with, well, 918 accents, I guess. Kind of strange, I guess quite rare, uh, but very cool looking. 05 GT, Specialia Perta, Marshall Argo SV, Scuderia. Wow, it just keeps on going. I'm going to struggle to kind of well, film all this, really. <laughs> Look at the spec on this. So, on, well, general uh, inspection, you'll think, oh, it's just a yellow Speciali Aperta with some nice black and red stripes. But no. <laughs> I don't know what to think of this, actually. I mean, it's, it's different. Wow, that's very red and yellow. <laughs> Uh, I don't really know what to, to, to kind of make of that. That's unusual. Very unusual. This is nice though. Stripeless Scuderia. How clean does that look? Argento Nürburgring with no stripes. Lovely. Look at all this up here. Absolutely mad. The Diablo there. We've got a 360 Challenge. The TR348. Another Testarossa. You Bentley's and Rolls Royces, Brabus Beast, Brabus 900. Holy moly, look at this! 900. That is ridiculous. Love those wheels though. 900 brake horsepower. This is the one I think which has got like 1500 newton meters of torque in a barge. <laughs> That's nice though. That's one of my favourite lot in the auction. <laughs> no, in all seriousness, no. There is some mad stuff here. I'm still very overwhelmed at all this. <laughs> that is regrettably going to wrap up today's video though. Like I said, I've literally flown out here, especially for this. So I've got to whiz back to the airport, probably with another stupidly expensive taxi and fly back home again. But this was nuts, um, absolutely nuts. I would like to know what car is your favorite though, out of all the ones here today, the Veneno, the one to one, the Laugh, the TDF, the one seven, any of them. Which one is your favourite? Because I don't really know. I'm, I'm struggling. <laughs> so, if you have a favourite, let me know down in the comments because, I mean, this is nuts. What a collection. What a collection. And hopefully they all, they all go to uh, some nice homes uh, after the auction. Um, and hopefully they get driven as well. Because that's one thing which is a bit painful about all this. Half of these are pretty much brand new. Um, but anyway, stunning to see. Incredible. Uh, selection of cars um, and yeah that's going to wrap up today's video i hope you guys have enjoyed if you have please do make sure you leave a like and make sure you subscribe for all the adventures still to come